This is the memory game hack, based off of Mark Rober's beloved childhood game, the Simon Memory Game, but of course with two major differences beyond the fact that we're using the IR turret and not some slap pads. The first major difference is we're using numbers instead of the color pads. And along with that, you have to press the button using the IR remote. The second and most critical challenge is, if you lose this game, you're gonna feel it. This hack incorporates two extra pieces of hardware. You have the seven segment display to display the numbers as you often see with a lot of different number displays. Then we added a buzzer to help us know what number we are on based off of the tone of the sound. The game is simple. You press the OK button to start the game and it will give you the first number in the sequence. You press that same number and then it will start over the sequence with the first number, add a second number, and then you repeat those first two. And then it adds a third, you repeat the three, and then it continues until you complete the game. I currently have the game set to 10 digits. You can add as many as you want, but good luck. For each digit that you add, the faster it will run. Let me know if you think that Mark Rober and the Crunch Labs team should play this game hack. For those interested in replicating this hack but don't have the sensors, you can use the Amazon affiliate link in the description to find some kits that have multiple different sensors for the buzzer and the seven segment display, allowing you to build this and many other hacks. Games are a great way to learn coding because you already know how the game works. The memory game, for example, it gives you something to remember and then you remember it and show that you remember it by either in this case, pressing the number that corresponds with the number it provided to you. It's simple, but then when you start to realize that when you have multiple components and layers in the coding aspect, it gets more and more complicated. And of course, I just try to blow by it and build it from scratch, and it didn't work. Taking the time to design a game is critical, essential, and will help you so much in the long run. Let's talk game design. For the memory game to work, you first need a list of random numbers. Second of all, you need to be able to keep track of which round you are on. Essentially, what number do you go to in your list of random numbers? And thirdly, you need to keep track of which number you are pressing for each round. So there is a secondary layer that you need to keep track of that took a bit to figure out how to make work. To create the list of random numbers was quite simple. You just have a function with a for loop that would use the random function to then assign a new number to the list. For the second and third part, we just had two different variables tracking each individual aspect of the game, what level you were on and then what number you had pressed. Where it really got tricky though was to have the game wait until you pressed a number but keep track of which number you were last on. The extra layer of complexity comes with interacting with your outputs to show the number on the seven segment display and to give the buzzer which tone it needs to know based on which number you are using. For some fun, I've been trying to add this piezo, piezo, not exactly sure how to say it, buzzer that makes a little bit of sound. So that way when you get a wrong number, it makes some sound and we can do some other things with it. But I've been having a lot of problems with it. I've been working on this for three hours tonight, trying to get this one simple thing added to it. Now there's a couple layers to the problem. For one, the seven segment display takes up seven of my ports. So I'm running out of ports and have to now use the analog side of things. And I was screwing things up by picking one of the few analogs that you can't use digital information for. So that was a bit of the problem. But then I finally got it working to the point that it actually gives me a sound. But then I can't use anything else on the remote. None of the other buttons give me any input. I can't turn the IR remote. I can't do anything else. It freezes it out. And I could not figure out why. I've tried a whole bunch of different things and then finally found a post online that says that the tone function that is being used for this piezo buzzer uses a timer, 
which happens to be the same timer that the IR remote library uses. So now they are conflicting. So as soon as I press the button to run the piezo buzzer, it now disrupts the timer for the IR receiver. So now it won't receive any new signal. I just added a little chunk of code, hoping this will fix it, where it basically stops the timer on the receiver, takes the input and completes the buzzer sound, and then starts the timer again on the IR receiver. No idea if it's gonna work, so you get to see and watch whether or not this will actually work. So let's upload it. And I hope this works, because this has been frustrating. That's not a good start. Okay, so we're working so far, pressing the button for the buzzer. All right, we've got that. Now do we have, oh, it's working. <laughs> I think we got our fix. <laughs> that was a pain, that was frustrating. This is where engineering will teach you the skill of perseverance, whether you want it to or not. For you to be able to complete this project, you need to continue through the hardships, the difficulties, and the things that aren't working and that are very frustrating. You just need to continue at it. Continue learning what you need to learn to be able to complete the project. And sometimes it's just figuring out that one little bug that is just not letting you complete the game. Once I figure that out, learn the two lines of code that I need to add to it, and voila, there it is. It's all done. It worked perfectly. Three hours for that one night. I was so frustrated and irritated that I had to vent on Discord just about how annoying it was for these two chunks of code to conflict with each other. I had no idea it was happening. All this goes without saying, this one was a little more frustrating <laughs> than some of the other builds that I have done but it's completed. I'm happy with the end result. The game works actually quite well. This hack drove me so crazy that I decided to make a short little thriller movie out of it. Check this one out.